I'm finally back and I'm looking for a new operating system. And they're all out. Do you guys happen to have any leftover operating systems? Yes, we have one left. Windows XP. Sick, I'll just take this down. Anyways, you guys can probably tell what we're doing today. Today we're going to install Windows XP on real hardware and actually try to daily drive it. Now there are a lot of things that we have to factor into this, such as network, drivers, compatibility, and hardware issues. And don't even get me started on hardware issues. Now before this video starts, I want to thank everybody who requested me to do Windows XP in the first place, because I was thinking of doing Windows Vista, but I wanted to save the trouble for later. I also want to thank you guys for 400 subscribers, what the hell? You guys are amazing, I seriously cannot tell you how thankful I am right now. But Enough of love, let's get started. First step was to insert your Windows XP USB with Surface Pack 3. From this point on, I was trying to understand how this computer's BIOS worked, but it was so confusing. At first, it kept on giving me a bunch of weird messages saying that my power supply's voltage was too low and that my date and time was wrong, which is pretty normal for an old BIOS. But for some reason, when my little brother pressed the F1 key, it didn't want to go forward. So we had to restart the computer one more time. After restarting the computer, we finally got an option to go into the BIOS. I also wonder what Intel Fast Call for Help is. Like, does it call the cops or some shit? Moving on, upon entering BIOS, we get this beautiful interface that I'm super familiar with. Also, for some reason, my USB had a problem where it wouldn't turn on unless it was bent at an angle which was super scuffed but at one point i wrapped the cable around and it started working but even after trial and error we got the window set up to work oh and we got a blue screen i wonder why yeah it turns out that windows xp does not have ahci drivers natively and that the computer i'm using cmos battery is dying so bad to the point where it can't even save a bio setting so every time i try to change it back to ide or ATA or legacy it just keeps switching back to ahci so my solution here is let's try a different computer Upon switching desktops, I was finally able to install Windows XP on my hard drive. All I had to do to fix this was to get a system that didn't have a corrupted BIOS and switch the SATA operation to IDE. I was also a little skeptical if a third generation i5 was going to even work on Windows XP, but to my surprise, it actually did work. From this point forward, I planted my camera down and I saw that 39 minute wait. What the hell? Sometimes I feel grateful for the hardware that I have nowadays because I could not wait this long back then. After that horridiculous waiting time, I put in my username and password and I moved on from the procedure. Sadly, I don't have footage of the out of box experience, but it's not like it really mattered because I didn't have sound drivers. So the first thing I did upon entering the desktop was inserting my network USB. Before I was planning this video, I made sure I bought a network USB compatible for Windows XP because I didn't want to end up with a network USB that wasn't compatible in the first place. Once again, thankfully Firefox still has a version that's compatible with Windows XP. But then I got this really long error saying that my connection was insecure. So then I moved on and I decided to play any game that I could find. Now I really don't have much experience playing this game, so this is my first time. Now the premise of this game is pretty simple. You launch a ball and you make sure it doesn't fall out. The more it bounces around and hits stuff, the higher score you get. Now I'm not sure about all the keybinds in this game, like if there's certain things you can do. So the only controls I knew was Z and Slash. By the way, before I started recording, my little brother got a score of 1 million, which I was pretty surprised about. So this recording of me playing the game was after his attempt, so I was trying to beat it actively. Anyways, moving on, I got bored of pinball very easily, so I decided to go on Steam Unlocked to look for a game. Do you want to guess what game I looked for? There will never be a time in history where I won't try out Peggle on an operating system. Any operating system I install, can it run Peggle? That's the new norm. But as you can clearly see, Windows XP runs Peggle like a beauty. Seriously, this is like the first operating system that's had no trouble running Peggle. I'm also kind of shocked by the size of this game. 40 megabytes? That's like almost portable. You could put that on a USB and run this game anywhere you want. It's almost like a bootable Peggle. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Now that that's over, let's try some YouTube. <laughs> now I'll be honest, 
I was a little shocked that YouTube still works on Windows XP, but to be fair, most functions on Windows XP still work, so YouTube will be the exception for now. Also, for some reason, I have two search bars. I don't know if it's a glitch with the web page or if it's intentional. Anyways, the next thing I wanted to search up was some peak. <clears throat> I'm honestly very surprised that Windows XP can still display channels. It looks very clean too. You know, since we're on Windows XP, I felt the need to search up some OG videos, such as Neon Cat and the What The F Boom. I think the what the f boom is probably the most iconic one for me. What the fuck? <laughs> Time to wrap it all up. Should you daily drive Windows XP? Yes. Now some of you might say, why? I truly think that owning a legacy desktop is very useful, especially if you have old CDs, DVDs, and ROMs that you want to test out, old games that you want to play, old movies you want to watch. Having an old desktop with Windows XP gives you an advantage that most modern software and hardware cannot do for you. Also, some of you in the comments may go, Marapolo, why did you connect Windows XP to the internet? Don't you know you'll get a bunch of viruses? Actually, you're wrong. Now you probably got your information off this one dude who turned off his firewall and then connected it to the internet. That you should not do. If you have your firewall on and you have some antivirus also enabled, you should be fine. Now enough of me rambling, I want to say thank you guys for 400 subscribers and I hope to see you guys again. Ciao.